the left gastric vein this was not over not over right ha huh. they'll give you the paper they have gone for photocopying it <clears throat> i hope the voice is loud and clear without any audio video delay for the online students it will not be there because we spoke to our uh, uh, live stream people left gastric vein drains into the portal vein is what you have to basically remember now if you look at the venous drainage of the stomach one of the favorite questions of the examiner the left and right gastric veins they drain directly into the portal vein and how is portal vein basically formed doctor splenic and superior mesenteric vein two they are joined to form portal vein portal vein takes the blood from the gut all the way to the liver and into that portal vein the left and right gastric veins will be draining is what you need to basically remember then you have one more type of gastric vein which is basically called short gastric vein the short gastric vein and the left gastroepiploic vein they drain into directly splenic vein i told no the two veins splenic vein and uh, mesenteric vein combine to form portal vein then if the left gastroepiploic drains into splenic vein right gastroepiploic vein drains into superior mesenteric vein any entrance you go in this country if at all a question is asked on the venous drainage of the stomach this is the critical point you should remember and understand left and right gastric vein into portal vein short gastric vein into splenic vein left gastroepiploic into splenic vein but the right gastroepiploic into portal vein is what you have to sorry superior mesenteric vein is what you need to ultimately remember <clears throat> can the online students can punch whether the voice is loud and clear for everybody without any delay yeah the facial nerve injury what are the consequences of it facial nerve will supply secretomotor fibers for some of the glands we must know which glands does it supply the sublingual lacrimal and submandibular they are all supplied by facial nerve the parotid secretions are controlled by glossopharyngeal auricular temporal frey syndrome you remember that ha huh. so basically the glossopharyngeal through botic ganglion through the auricular temporal will ultimately provide secretomotor for parotid three types of salivary glands are there no one is parotid other are sublingual submandibular so the parotids secretomotor comes from the auricular temporal via otic ganglion whereas uh, the facial nerve is the one which supplies the remaining salivary gland sublingual submandibular etc etc is what you need to basically remember then how does facial nerve ultimately supplies lacrimal glands why do we get tears for uh, other success huh? so it is the greater petrosal nerve easy to remember when our ears are becoming great and we are nothing then we get tears so greater petrosal nerve is typically the one secretomotor fibers from the facial nerve are carried through the greater petrosal nerve to the lacrimal gland is what you have to ultimately remember <clears throat> now what are the structures which are injured while you are operating on the lesser omentum is one of the favorite questions of the examiner so you must know what are there along the boundary of the lesser omentum what are the other name given for the lesser omentum doctor it is also called hepatogastric ligament it connects the lesser curvature of the stomach with that of the liver so tomorrow some of you are going to be top surgical gastroenterologists so while you are operating what happens doctor you can end up in injuring a portal vein hepatic artery proper and the common hepatic duct which are all along the hepatic attachment of this gastrohepatic ligament is what you have to ultimately remember <clears throat> now so you should remember the right free margin what is the right free margin of the hepatogastric ligament liver left free margin is along lesser curvature of the stomach 
right free margin contains the portal triad portal v in common bile duct hepatic artery etc etc which can get injured while you are operating on the lesser momentum is what you have to ultimately remember <clears throat> about the tongue what are all the true statements is a favorite question in pgi may 2012 <clears throat> so doctor facial nerve is the one which supplies the fungiform papillae glossopharyngeal supplies the circumvallate papillae in the tongue the genial glasses is also called safety muscle which is true and the blood supply of the tongue comes from the lingual artery and uh, posterior part of the tongue how is it derived is the favorite question of the examiner basically if you look at the circumvallate papillae see you are having the uh, oh um, we have given b as a correct answer eh? no 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 there is a small correction cord tympani is a nerve to the taste in the anterior to the of the tongue except the circumvallate papillae that's right glossopharyngeal is the one instead of facial nerve is the one which supplies the circumvallate papillae is true there is all other taste buds fungiform papillae is facial nerve so this uh, specific difference between which papillae is supplied by which cranial nerve is going to be a favorite question of the examiner once more in the next entrance exam now similarly if you look at the embryology of the tongue posterior one third of the tongue it is derived from the second and third pharyngeal arches and uh, a small part of even the fourth pharyngeal part pouch is what in arch is what you need to basically remember so each branchial arches for example second branchial arch is supplied by which nerve seventh facial nerve s for seventh s for second s for stapes there is lot of things related to s okay so that's what you need to ultimately remember what happens whenever there is any tibial nerve injury is a very very important question <clears throat> basically tibial nerve is the one which supplies which important muscle doctor the anterior compartment muscles so that is the reason there is a loss of the dorsiflexion of the foot is what happens two types of flexion if this is the foot plantar flexion dorsiflexion dorsi is towards the shin of the tibia for that you require anterior muscles of the calf and that is what is supplied by the tibial nerve is what i want to underscore to all of you and that is the reason we get what is called foot drop whenever the tibial nerve injury is there bilateral foot drop can you get in any situation yes in gulenberry post infectious polyneuritis there is a bilateral foot drop which can develop is what you need to ultimately remember anatomy of the breast doctor from times immemorial both in belly and lau and also in anatomy in both of them it is a very favorite area one full page is dedicated for the nerve supply blood supply lymphatic drainage etc of the breast so what are the various vessels which are ultimately supplying the breast so you must know axillary artery internal mammary artery intercostal arteries so there is a reason lateral thoracic artery internal mammary artery superior thoracic artery they are all the vessels which are supplying the breast is what you need to remember one question on brachial plexus you will remember me in the exam hall either herb's palsy or clumkis and one out of the five nerves radial nerve median nerve ulnar nerve muscular cutaneous nerve axillary nerve one question will definitely come in the anatomy five questions in the exam you don't get any time to read at all at least read this five nerves and go to the exam especially ulnar radial median right so upper trunk of the brachial plexus injury what do you call you also call it as herb's palsy what happens in herb's palsy it is called porter tip position right doctor so <clears throat> porter tip position is what you have to basically remember pronation of the forearm 
inability to initiate the abduction so that the shoulder is erected and there is a paralysis of the deltoid that is the reason there is a loss of the prominence on the shoulder these are the features whenever there is an injury at palsy portal portal tips position is what you need to remember posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh supplies the skin on which important part is a very very important question <clears throat> very good to see about 25 plus online viewers and many more from their home tomorrow and day after tomorrow please do come ask your friends to come for a free class in ophthalmology dr rajaratnam will be uh, we taught it uh, 4 to 8 pm instead uh, it will be 2 to 8 pm little longer time is required to finish ophthalmology afternoon 2 to 8 pm even on sunday afternoon 2 to 8 pm so in two sessions most of the ophthalmology high yield areas will all be covered she is an excellent teacher i can assure you that you won't be disappointed <coughs> so yeah posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh typically doctor the skin on the back and the medial aspect of the thigh the popliteal fossa is another important area by the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh and on the leg thigh is different from leg no proximal part of the leg also posterior aspect posterior aspect of the thigh and also the popliteal fossa all of them are supplied by posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh is what you have to ultimately remember femoral ring ka boundaries kya hota inguinal canal ka boundaries kya hoga favorite area for the examiner so basically where is femoral ring from the days of anatomy it is a confusion what is femoral triangle what is femoral ring etc etc so doctor whenever we talk of femoral ring we are talk we are talking about this area right so let's talk about it you have something called femoral canal it has an entry point that entry point simhadwaram of uh, femoral canal is called femoral ring so this femoral ring anteriorly what is there inguinal ligament posteriorly there is a pectineal pectineous muscle is there no pectineal ligament and medially there is a lacunar ligament and laterally there is a septum which will be dividing it from the femoral vein laterally huh? so this is a typical this is basically the right thigh which we are looking at is what you need to remember okay doctor now whenever you are dissecting ischiorectal abscess so you must know superficial perineal pouch deep perineal pouch is ischiorectal fossa the boundaries the contents what is anterior what is posterior today only after going home you need to revise one question will come out of these three superficial and deep perineal pouch and ischiorectal fossa so doctor these are all the structures that you find uh, mainly it is the inferior rectal nerve which is the one which is the constituent of the ischiorectal uh, fossa which can get injured then what about the other structures where, what do they supply where are they located if you look at ilio inguinal nerve it supplies the external genitalia upper part of the medial side of the thigh that is the story of ilio inguinal nerve so what are the contents of the ischiorectal fossa is a very very important question you have an inferior rectal nerve which can get injured while you are draining the abscess in the ischiorectal fossa similarly pudendal canal and its contents perineal branch of the fourth sacral nerve perforating cutaneous branch of s234 so these are all the contents of the ischiorectal fossa is what you have to ultimately remember what constitutes the blood brain barrier csf doctor csf bbb they are the two things repeatedly asked in the md entrance how much csf volume if the examiner is more cruel he will ask how much is produced hourly or per day 
everything you must. So, doctor, the blood brain barrier is mainly formed by astrocytes, miraglial cells, which form that supporting tissue, which is basically called the blood brain barrier, is what you need to basically remember. Now, there are some, some structures. Neurological structures which are exposed to the exterior, that is, there is no barrier for them. What are those structures which are uh, beyond the BBB is a very important question. There is a place called subformical organ, organum vasculosum, posterior pituitary, area prosthema, subcommissural organ, and pineal body. These are the structures in the brain which are outside, I mean they are within the brain but this BBB does not cover them. That is what you need to ultimately remember. They are all called the circumventricular organs where the BBB is not there is what I want to underscore to all of you. Now let us talk about uh, <coughs> fallopian tubes. Today we don't have any comments from our students. I think unless the video strikes or freezes, they won't uh, be speaking to the teacher. Huh? So <clears throat> you can make a guess of an answer before I reveal the answer, so that we will have some amount of uh, um, dual opportunity of dual interactive session. Huh? 